Hi there. In this video, we're going to show how you can use a custom action to send an email using SendGrid. So to get started, let's look at this example app. On my home screen, I have a list of users and then an email button that takes me to this Compose email screen where I can create an email and send it to that user. So for this Send button to do that, we need to create a custom action. So we'll click on the Send button here, and then we're going to add the action like we normally would by clicking the Add Action menu. And you'll notice there's an option here for custom action. So if we go into that, we'll see custom actions that we've already made, as well as the option to create a new custom action, which is what we're going to choose here. Now I can give my custom action a name. So this is going to be send grid email. And we can collect the, the type of custom actions, whether it's creating, updating, or deleting something. So this is going to be create. Now we'll go on to the next step. And we need to put in the API base URL. So all custom actions are sending API requests. So let me get the URL for the SendGrid API and paste that in there. Uh, the method here, so you can choose your API uh, request method. So this is going to be a post. As well as if your API requires any authorization, you can set that up with either headers or query parameters. Uh, in this case, we need to do a header uh, called authorization. And then uh, we're going to put in the value, which is the uh, request key. And then we can go ahead and click Done. And now we can enter the body of the API request. So if we take the example from SendGrid's API documentation, you can see they give us some JSON like this. Um, so now the next thing we need to do is customize this request because we don't want the email to go to example at gmail.com. We want it to go to the users of our app. Same goes for the subject and the body of the email. Uh, we want those to be whatever the user is typing in. So we need to add some inputs for our action. So let me go ahead and add a text input here. And this will be the uh, recipient email. Whenever you add an input, you need to add an example value that we can use for our uh, test uh, that we do to make sure your custom action is set up correctly. So we'll add one for the recipient email. And now I can go in here to the body. And instead of just saying this is always going to have the email be example at gmail.com, I can remove that. And uh, the input now shows up in this magic text menu. So I can add the recipient's email here as well. And uh, I can go ahead and do that for the subject and uh, the body. So I'll go ahead and add those inputs. So this one will be the subject. And we'll have the example value be test subject. And we'll add one for the body of the email. And uh, we'll go ahead and add one for the um, recipient first name as well. Or recipient name, rather. OK, so now I can go ahead and add those extra inputs in here. So let me replace John Doe with the recipient name, this hello world subject. with the subject here and the body replace that as well okay now that we have our api request all set up we're good one thing that I do want to point out is that if your API request is going to use values from the inputs of your action, uh, you can also add that to the uh, base URL as well as to the authorization value. Um, so if the API information was different depending on maybe the user or where they were in your app or the different data in your database, uh, you can set those up to be inputs in your actions and then use those uh, when you're setting this up as well. 
Uh, okay, so now we're going to click on run test and we'll run it. And we can see that our test was successful. So now we can save the custom action. Okay, and now this custom action has been added to the send button. And you can see here, this action looks a lot like the default Adalo actions, um, but you can see here are the four inputs that we had set up. So now we can say that the recipient email uh, should be the current user's email, right? So that's the user I clicked on from the list on the first screen. You can say that the subject uh, is going to be for my form inputs here, the subject input. So whatever the user types into this box is what's going to get populated as the subject. Uh, the same goes for the email body. We'll grab that from our form inputs as well. And uh, lastly, we'll do the recipient name as the current user's full name. And then I can click done, and that's it. So now when you run the app and click send, it will send an email using your SendGrid account uh, to the user that you clicked on in the app. If you need to make any changes to your custom action, uh, you can click into it. And in Show Advanced, uh, you can see there's an Edit button, and that brings up the modal where you can make tweaks to how your custom action is set up. So there you go. That's how to set up a custom action to send an email using SendGrid.